The following has been found entirely at random. I went to my beloved book of writings, letters, and experiences of Robert Murray McShane. I had placed an important note inside, and I turned to that note and that page, and here's what I found from a letter to his parishioners dated in 1839. I read a portion. Consider how much God has done to save your souls. He has provided a great Savior and a great salvation. He did not give man or angel, but the Creator of all, to be the substitute of sinners. His blood is precious blood. His righteousness is the righteousness of God. And now to him that worketh not, but believeth on him, that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted to him for righteousness. That's from Romans 4. Most precious word. Give up your toil, self-justifying soul. You have gone from mountain to hill. You have forgotten your resting place. Change your plan. Work not, but believe on him that justifieth the ungodly. Believe the record that God hath given concerning his Son. A glorious, all-perfect, all-divine surety is laid down at your feet. He is within your reach. He is nigh thee. Take him and live. Refuse him and perish. What could have been done more for my vineyard that I have not done in it? And then, again, consider the ordinances God has given you. He has made you into a vineyard. Scotland is the likest of all lands to God's ancient Israel. How wonderfully has God planted and maintained godly ministers in his land from the time of Knox to the present day. He has divided the whole land into parishes. Even on the barren hills of our country he has planted the choicest vine. Hundreds of godly laborers he has sent to gather out the stones of it. God has done this for you also. He has built a tower in the midst of you. Have you not seen his own hand fencing you round? building a gospel tower in the midst of you and a gospel vine press therein? And has he not sent me among you, who am less than the least of all the members of Christ, and yet determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified? Has not the Spirit of God been sometimes present in our sanctuary? Have not some hearts been filled there with gladness more than in the time that their corn and wine increased? Have not some hearts tasted there the love that is better than wine? What could have been done more for my vineyard that I have not done in it? Now let me ask you, what fruit have we borne, grapes or wild grapes? Ah, I fear the most can show nothing but wild grapes. If God looks down upon us as a parish, what does he see? Are there not still a thousand souls, utter strangers to the house of God? How many does his holy eye now rest upon who are seldom in the house of prayer? who neglect it in the forenoon, how many who frequent the tavern on the Sabbath day. Oh, why do they bring forth wild grapes? If God looks upon you as families, what does he see? How many prayerless families? How often, as I passed your windows late at eve or at early dawn, have I listened for the melody of psalms and listened all in vain? God also has listened, but still in vain. How many careless parents does his pure eye see among you, who will one day, if you turn not, meet your neglected children in an eternal hell? How many undutiful children? How many unfaithful servants? Ah, why such a vineyard of wild grapes? If God looks on you as individual souls, how many does he see that were never awakened to real concern about your souls? How many that never shed a tear for your perishing souls? How many that were never driven to pray? How many that know not what it is to bend the knee? How many that have no uptaking of Christ and are yet cold-hearted and at ease? How many does God know among you that have never laid hold of the only sure covenant? How many that have no peace in believing and yet cry, Peace, peace, when there is no peace? How many does God see among you who have no change of heart and life, who are given up to the sins of the flesh and of the mind, and yet you bless yourself in your heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of my heart, to add drunkenness to thirst? Ah, 
Why do you thus spring forth, wild grapes? Well, I'll stop there. This is the yearning heart of a young pastor. Died in his 30th year. Such power, such anointing, such hope, and such mourning over the carefree who wander at the brink of destruction.